Hello and welcome to the Anarcho Futurist Podcast. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Today I will be reviewing a book called What is Property by Pierre Joseph Proudhon. He is a French anarchist philosopher in the early to mid 1800s. Uh, one thing to point out before I get started with the actual content of the book, it seems like the publisher really took his anarchist philosophy. Uh, to the limits, even in formatting the book, um, you know, whoever publishes the book was like, oh, anarchy, no rules, huh? So I guess that means we don't have to, we can just throw out MLA formatting and no indentures, indenting beginning of paragraphs and all that kind of stuff. So the entire book is just one big blob of text. There's no separation between paragraphs or anything. And uh, that makes it a little bit more challenging to read, uh, but, you know, whatever. Um, This is a a fascinating read in terms of some of the things that he brings up. He brings up some very interesting philosophical questions that really challenge the foundations of of what modern society has been built on, um, particularly property. Um, but, but that kind of philosophical challenge is something that you, you really don't get in a lot of mainstream thought, which is why it's really interesting to go to these anarchist philosophers, um, to see that challenged. Uh, one thing that was annoying, even though he does propose some really interesting questions, it gets really annoying throughout the whole time because he's really just talking trash about other philosophers of his day and you know how how ignorant the other philosophers are and how how much smarter he is than them and uh you know you kind of just wish it's like oh dude go on and make your point you know um but there was an interesting line while he's talking smack about other philosophers. He describes another philosopher's logic as a twaddle of petty foggery. That's, that's a classic insult right there. You don't hear people throwing around that. If, if Trump were to describe Muslim immigrants as a twaddle of petty foggery, I would be more likely to be on his side on that kind of stuff. But anyway... So Proudhon answers the question, what is property? It's a rhetorical question. He answers, what is property? Early on in the book, with the reply, property is theft. And to illustrate his point, he asks the question, what is slavery? And his response is, slavery is murder because it's taking someone's life. So this is really interesting how he he kind of fleshes out this philosophy right here. Slavery is taking the freedom of someone else to live their life, and therefore he equates that with murder. Property, which is basically making a claim on a section of land or some resource or some machinery, um, that this is mine, no one else in society can have access to it, Um, you know, he describes that as theft. So it's just... It's it's far out there. It's not something that you particularly hear very much. Uh, you know, especially in modern times, anarchist thought has really been pushed to the fringes and you just don't hear it very much. Um, but uh, he, he him illustrating that is, is uh, a really... It's mind-expanding because it really challenges what you think of when you think of, you know, how our society is structured and really gets at the roots of some of that. He believes that every person in the country has equal claim to the land. So if one person dominates more than his or her share, then they're stealing from others. So basically, if there's a million people that live in the country, everybody is entitled to one one one-millionth of the land. And basically, if somebody takes two one millionths of the land, then they're essentially stealing from every other person in society, or at least whoever is required to go with less land. Um, Proudhon rejects what he sees as the tyranny from both the state and from property owners who are lords over their domain. Um, I found this really interesting, uh, you know, 
it's it's uh, really popular, particularly in like libertarian thought in the U.S. to talk about the tyranny of the state. Um, you hear taxation is theft, which I think Proudhon would agree with. Um, but uh, tyranny of of the private sector, you just don't hear much about in in modern discourse. Um, and when you think about it, um, you know, I'm thinking if you get a job working for a corporation, you essentially sign over your uh, your freedom of speech. You know, pretty much the Bill of Rights is is a done deal when you work for a private corporation. I mean, how many times have you seen somebody being fired over something that they said on social media, something they posted on social media? Um, you know, it's interesting that, um, you know, you're able, you're capable of acting essentially as a tyrant over your domain when you have private property. He distinguishes between what he calls legitimate property, uh, which he names possession, which are things that are, you know, you regularly use, that you labor upon, or that you occupy, like your house, your toothbrush, uh, your garden, things like that, versus what he calls illegitimate property, which basically he's describing as absentee ownership. So a good way to look at this is your toothbrush is your personal property, or your possession, as he would say, but you can't own a toothbrush factory. Um, and, uh, you know, this is kind of a prelude to Karl Marx, whose, whose idea was you can't expropriate someone else's labor. Um, so uh, that's interesting because... You know, a lot of times when when you, you first bring this up, you know, there's no property. It kind of freaks you out saying, oh, well, there's things that I own that I really enjoy holding on to. And, and what he's really saying is you can't, um, you know, live here and work here and be collecting rent from somewhere else that, you know, someplace that you didn't build or that you didn't you're not currently laboring on. Um, so basically kind of, kind of throwing out absentee ownership. He contrasts what he sees as the illegitimate rights of property with what he sees as legitimate rights being liberty, security, and equality. And he had a good quote on, on this point, um, at one point in the book, he says, the liberty and security of the rich do not suffer from the liberty and security of the poor. Far from that. They are mutually strengthened and sustain each other. The rich man's right of property, on the contrary, has to be continually defended against the poor man's desire for property. So this is, I, uh, there's a lot in this quote that I found really interesting. You know, the first part is that, um, uh, you know, with, and you hear this in, in anarchist circles a little bit, that um, by eliminating private property and private ownership of the means of production, uh, you're not only liberating the poor and the working class people, you're also liberating the capitalists, the owners, the, the rich, because there's a certain alienation uh, that comes with your place in society. Um, obviously it's real easy to see how, uh, you know, a poor person's labor is being expropriated and, uh, how, um, you know, especially if you look at Marx's theory of surplus value, how, you know, the owner is always getting more value out of the labor than, uh, the laborer is paid in return. So it's easy to see how there's that social alienation there with the poor, the working person. It's more difficult to see how uh, how it is with uh, the the rich person, the owner, um, because they have a social alienation from the people that are working for them. They are unable to form relationships. Um, you know, uh, you can't. It's it's very unlikely that you're going to go hang out at your boss's house and, you know, have dinner over there or something like that. Um, you know, the, the reality is there's there's an, kind of an artificial separation um, in classes 
that that comes from the ownership of property. The second part, which says the rich man's right of property, on the contrary, has to be continually defended against the poor man's desire for property. Um, so what he's kind of saying here is that property is essentially based on violence. Um, there's a uh, kind of a precognition of of violence that uh, gives you that right of property. And in our society today, and in 1800s French society, um, that violence was monopolized and is monopolized by the state. So basically, and I know uh, voluntarists would disagree with this, but um, I think Proudhon's point here is that you cannot have private property without the state or without some means of violence to defend it. So overall, this is a good book if you're interested in early anarchist thought. Uh, written in 1840, Proudhon predates uh, other early anarchist philosophers like uh, Kropotkin and Bakunin. Um, uh, but if you're looking for a really solid uh, work on anarchist thought, I would really direct you to uh, Peter Kropotkin's The Conquest of Bread. I think that fleshed out uh, a lot more clearly what an anarchist society would actually look like and some of the morals uh, that go along with why we should want an anarchist society. Um, this book, uh, What is Property, left me wanting more. Uh, he spends so much of his time criticizing other philosophers, and he'll talk about how thoroughly he's going to prove this point. You know, he's like, "Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to show you so clearly, and and prove beyond a shadow of a doubt how, you know, this this point is true." And he spends very little time on the actual philosophy of his arguments, so that gets kind of frustrating. Um, you just want him to to kind of get on with it, but he's he kind of gets pretty grandiose in his build-up to his philosophy without a ton of, uh, you know, uh, without a ton of follow-through. Interesting facts about Proudhon. Proudhon called himself a mutualist, which is in the category of social anarchism. And uh, also, Proudhon is sometimes credited for the anarchist symbol, uh, using it to represent both anarchy and order. If you've seen the anarchist symbol, it's an A with a circle around it. Um, the A represents anarchy, and the circle represents an O for order. A lot of times you think of anarchy as chaos, um, and Proudhon was very insistent that, uh, you know, that's absolutely not what uh, anarchy was all about, that it was highly ordered, it was just a horizontally organized society without hierarchy. Um, he doesn't talk a lot about direct dem democracy, but that's where anarchists and mutualists typically go with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, anarchy and order, really in all strains of anarchist thought, go together. Uh, it's really... Uh, in my opinion, nothing more than propaganda that has uh, tried to correlate anarchy with chaos. And to some extent, there has been a, a very small minority of anarchists that have, you know, uh, been throwing bombs and breaking windows, but, you know, the vast majority of anarchists are, are extremely peaceful. And, uh, you know, I think that peacefulness is a, a central part of the anarchist philosophy. Um, but that's just my, my take on it. Um, so if you've read this, uh, be glad that that is in your past. And if you haven't read this, wouldn't particularly recommend this if you're interested in anarchist thought, unless you just want to check something off your list to say that you've, you know, you've read Proudhon. Um, like I said before, uh, Kropotkin, Bakunin, those are much better anarchist philosophers, uh, but this is really, uh, it's, it's interesting to see how uh, early anarchist thought developed. So with that, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and thank you for joining the Anarcho-Futurist Podcast. <laughs>